Hello everyone, Jay here. Welcome back to another tutorial. So today we're going to talk about how to use Python to work with SQLite database. I made a video previously on Microsoft Access database. So you might be wondering why another database now? Unlike the Microsoft Access, I would consider SQLite a real database. It actually has many real world use cases. That's why I want to introduce you to probably one of my favorite database applications, the SQLite. If you have never heard of the SQLite database, it's actually the most widely deployed and used database engine in the world. So according to SQLite official website, you can see that you can find SQLite database used in every Android, iPhone, iOS, Mac, uh, Windows machines, and pretty much all the popular browsers, Firefox, Chrome, Safari, uh, iTunes, Dropbox, even in television and cars. So basically SQLite database is, is everywhere. I actually came across very recently the latest Stack Overflow survey, which is uh, 2021. So the results show that the SQLite database is the third most common database. There's a large community using this database and that is a good thing because you can always find other people asking maybe similar questions and then most of the time there will be answers provided on Google or on uh, Stack Overflow. So I want to talk about the pros and cons of this SQLite database. We're going to talk about the good things first. SQLite database is very small but still fast and reliable. Their website says small, fast, reliable, choose any three. The database engine is written in the C language and it can run on almost any device. Maximum database size is 281 terabytes, which is more than enough for most projects or use cases. And now let's take a look at the disadvantages of uh, SQLite database. Although SQLite database supports unlimited read access, it can only support one write access at a time. So it lacks the scalability if multiple users need to update information frequently in a database. Also, due to its design for local use, SQLite database doesn't require authentication, so you don't need a password uh, to access the information stored in the database. And that probably means it's not a good candidate for things like enterprise use, especially when you want more access control over the data. So in conclusion, SQLite database is a great tool for small to medium sized projects. I use it all the time for making websites and also workplace projects. For a relatively small team, let's say less than 10 people, it's very easy to set up and use. I'll show you very soon. I'm just going to import the SQLite 3 library. This folder back here, this will be our working folder. And I'm going to assign this uh, folder path to uh, variable called URL. So in order to create new SQLite databases, you can use the command sqlite3.connect. And here I'm going to use an F string. So URL, um, essentially what F string is, is um, we can plug in variable names inside the string, as long as you type F in front of your string, and then whatever variable name you have, just put that inside a curly bracket. And this basically means this string is equivalent to this one above. And I'm going to add a file name, call it test DB. The dot DB is to indicate that this is a SQLite database. So essentially SQLite database is, is just a single file that ends with a dot DB file extension. And you saw that this uh, SQLite database just got created. What we've done is we've essentially created a database connection object. And remember that in Python, everything is an object. So it make things so much easier to work with when, when you can treat a database connection as an object. So that's how you would create a new database. And I'm actually going to use a prepared sam sample data set for this tutorial. And uh, you can also download it from the link description below. Uh, so basically, the database contains historical positions of, of the Tesla stock held by the ARC, ARC fund, ARC K, uh, to be more specific. So you can see whether the ARC fund is, is buying or selling the stock on a given day. For those who's interested in the, the financial market and, and stock trading, um, I'm sure you know what Tesla stock and uh, the ARC funds are. Well, the prepared data is in this data.db SQLite database. I'm going to assign the con with the database connection. And since that file already exists, I can just feed the file path into the connect argument. And then you will see that, well, this is essentially a database connection object. 
that is linked to this data.db. Before actually diving into the Python part, I want to show you a software. It's called DB Browser or SQLite. It's a free software you can download and use. I use it all the time to view the data in the SQLite database. It just makes the work so much easier when you can actually visualize the data that you're working with. So that's why I use it all the time. All right, so I just opened up the DB browser for SQLite. So for those of you who are using Windows right now, don't worry, because I think the menus in this DB browser software are the same be between the Windows version and then the Linux version. So you might see things a little bit different, but all the menus, all the names, and I think even the positions of, of the buttons are, are the same. They just look a little bit different. That's all. You can click on this open database. Just find wherever your database file is and uh, open that up. In the first tab here, the database structure, this will show you all the kind of the, the database schema, the structure, uh, all the tables and, and all the fields in the database, all that good stuff. And if you want to see the actual content in the table, you have to click on the browse data. So here you have a drop down uh, to, to view different tables. And I believe these first two tables are junk. The real data I stored in the sample data app. You can also run SQL queries here. So for example, if you go to this execute SQL tab, let's uh, select everything from sample data where so here you will see the query result, and then I will show you all the entries with, with a by trait type. So let's step back for a moment. Usually when we interact with a database, this would be the tool for that purpose, right? You have some sort of uh, user interface that you can see the content in a database table like this, or you have somewhere to uh, type some sort of SQL command to execute uh, queries. So this is what we would normally do when interacting with a database. And now let's take this understanding and move to Python. So now imagine that you don't have this user interface anymore. And what you have is a database connection object. So this connection object replaces entirely that graphical interface that we just saw. And everything is done through coding. Just remember that this database connection object is equivalent to that graphical user interface that we had. And we'll use this connection object to interact with our database. So very similar to access database, uh, we also need a cursor in order to execute anything. So let us uh, create a cursor object. I think it's going to be this, probably lowercase. There we go. So inside this graphical interface, we're able to see uh, what tables are available, right? Like we have three tables here. How do we check what tables are available in our database when using Python? We can execute this uh, SQL command. So cursor.execute, select the name from SQLite master where type equal to table. I'm going to use a double quote so it doesn't conflict with the, with the single quote over there. So remember, uh, when you use cursor to execute, you also need to fetch the results, similar to working with the access database. So although you've done the query, nothing's being returned. So nothing's showing up after we execute that command, but all we got is this cursor object. This is actually an iterator. We can either look through or we can use the cursor object uh, method to view the content, either the fetch one or fetch all uh, method. Very similar to how we would work with a Microsoft Access database. And let's try that. So cursor.fetch. Let's say we, we fetch one, then it's going to re return uh, the very first record to us. And we, we can also uh, fetch all to return all the data. Well, uh, so here only two tables got returned because we, we've already returned one. And then think about the cursor as kind of like a pointer uh, inside the database. As soon as you fetch one, then you return the result and then the cursor moves down uh, to the next record. That's why after the fetch one, one result got returned. And at the same time, the cursor moved its position so that when you do fetch all, then uh, there are two more tables remaining. You can always use cursor to execute comments like this. So for, for example, the, the select comment that we just saw, we can do like this, right? So missing a letter E. And then cursor dot bat all um, once hidden. Let's open that up. 
So this is all the record that a buy uh, trading type. Essentially, we just did exactly the same thing as we did. So essentially, whatever we did here, uh, running this SQL inside this graphical user interface, this software, we've essentially replicated the same thing, the same query inside Python. And we can do a quick check. So there are 50 rows in here, right? Uh, 50 rows got returned from this graphical user interface. We can check how many rows got returned here. So we can do this len and then uh, the underscore. So what is the underscore here? So in Python, the underscore, usually it means the previous result. So now if I do this again, then it's going to return 50 because the 50 is the previous result like that. That's why um, here, because I know I, I've got the list uh, returned, so I can use this underscore to refer to that list. So my personal favorite way to query a database is obviously using uh, pandas. So pandas uh, provide very simple and clean APIs to work with SQL databases. So we don't have to worry about things like cursors and execute and, and fetch. Uh, all we need is a database connection, which is the column over here and a SQL a statement. And we can use Python to execute that statement. The best part is that the data is automatically placed and organized in the pandas data frame. So let's import pandas and let's do a df data frame equal to pd.read SQL. So, so, so the magic phrase is uh, read underscore SQL. The first argument in the read SQL is obviously the SQL statement. And then the second argument is the connection object. Now we've got all this record uh, stored into uh, this DF variable. We, we can we can take a look. Well, maybe do this. So there you go. We have everything inside a nicely format and this data frame. So that's how you would get the data from the SQLite database using uh, Python. And next, let's try to create a new table in the SQLite database. We'll use the usual uh, cursor way, and then later we'll try to use pandas uh, to replicate the same thing. And the way to do it is uh, we still have to use cursor and we'll We'll just execute uh, the keyword is create a table. We're going to name our new table as new table one. And also we need to pass in a tuple. And inside this tuple, there are uh, two things. So the first is the column name. And the second thing is the column data type. So in my case, the first column, I'm calling it a ticker and the data type is a text. If you have multiple column names, just uh, put a comma and uh, type in your other column names. So the second column is named as price and the data type is, is real number. So just numbers uh, with decimal places. And my last column is uh, the volume, the trading volume. And uh, of course it's it's shares, so it can, it can only be integer numbers. Well, um, it says uh, the database is locked. I think it's because I have the database open here. So all you need to do is, is just close the database and then close without saving. And let's execute the same command again. So there, uh, you just created a new table and you can check that by reopening this, this database, I mean. And this is the new table that we just created in Python. If we were to take a look, then you will see that um, it's actually empty because all we did back in here was uh, defining um, the table name and the column uh, names and then the column data type. We haven't really updated anything into the table yet. That's why it's empty. Let us save some record in the database. And we're still going to use the cursor uh, command. So cursor to execute the SQL statement is insert into and then give it the table name. So it's going to be new table one. Uh, here you have to also type the column names. So ticker price volume and then values. So these following the values keyword, this is where you want to type the actual data. So Tesla as the um, stock ticker name. And let's just say a hundred, uh, well, a thousand and a thousand and closing bracket. I also understand that sometimes you might, you might want to uh, pass variables into your SQL statement and you can do it like this. Cursor.execute values. You can just use three 
question marks or because I only have three columns. So it depends on how many columns you want to use in your case. These three question marks will be treated kind of like a variable. So how do you fit in the values? You fit it in at the end inside this bracket. So let's say now we want to fit in um, Netflix and a thousand and then a thousand again. Okay, so I think I made mistake on the closing bracket position. So it should be over here, right? So essentially, this part is the SQL statement. Then after that, so comma, and after that, this will be the variable or the values you want to feed in. These three question marks, they act kind of like a variable that you can replace. So there we go. One thing to remember is when you use the cursor.execute command, if you're only doing queries, then you don't have to do anything. You can just execute and then fetch to see the results. But if you are changing the database, you have to commit the changes kind of like this con and commit if you don't commit the changes then you won't see the changes showing up inside uh, the database so i'm gonna reopen this database again just because i have made additional changes in there so here this is the new table one uh, the table that we just created and we added uh, two rows of of, of data uh, tesla and netflix similar to how we query the database, uh, we can also use pandas to upload records into the database. And in my opinion, it's much easier using pandas than executing the, the raw SQL command. Let's quickly create a pandas data frame, uh, call it df. So here I've created a very simple data frame that containing four, four rows of records, stock tickers, their price and their volume for Tesla, Apple, Facebook, and Google. And the way to upload uh, this information into the database is um, very simple, similar to the way to query the database, which is uh, pd dot uh, read SQL. Instead of doing read, now we just do to SQL. So we're we're sending information to SQL. But to make things easier, we can uh, use the data frame object to call this method. So df dot to SQL and the first argument is the table's name. So I'm going to call it pandas table. And the second argument is the connection. And we actually don't have to worry about other argument, but there's one more argument that I like to use is the if exists. So basically it's saying if this pandas table already exists in the database, then what do you do? The options for if exists, um, there are three options, I think. Uh, so one is fail. So basically, Python will raise a value error if there's already table name exists in the database. And if you set this to replace, then it will delete the existing table and then insert a new one with the new data. And the third option is append. With this option, it will keep the existing records and then append the new values after the existing record. All right, so I think we'll have to close and reopen this database again to see the changes take effect. We can see that there's a new table here. It's called pandas table, which was created using uh, the pandas method. If we go in there to see the content of the table, then you will see that uh, these are a uh, simple data frame that we created using the Python program. Next, let's try to update records. So now we, we have all these data in a database. And what if you want to change some existing record? To update records in the database, uh, we're going to use the cursor.execute approach. So I'm going to use uh, the three quotes so that I can show the SQL statement a little bit better. So that would be update and pandas table. So update is a keyword and pandas table is the table name, uh, the table that we just created. And then we want to say a set picker equal to question mark. So basically we're setting the column to be a value. And th this question mark is a variable that we can feed in values later on. So price, same question mark and volume, the same uh, set to question mark. And then I will have a where statement for condition. So where ticker equal to question mark again. So basically what I'm doing here is I want to change, I want to change the values in all three columns. 
where the rows have matching values in the ticker column. So this is the statement. And because I'm using question mark as the variable, so now I, I've got to uh, pass in extra values. Uh, the first value I'm going to pass in is pandas. So this pandas will be feed into the sticker variable there and say 2000, 2000, 2001. And this 2000 will get feed into a price, the second question mark, and 2001 will get feed into uh, the volume, the third question mark. And the last question mark, let's just say on the replace Apple. So this is our pandas table. And then we're trying to replace all three values, one, two, three, all three columns, well, the, the value inside the three columns to match uh, pandas 2000, 2001. Um, for the record, for the record where the ticker is equal to Apple. So essentially, when I run this, you will see that this second line here, uh, because this is the only matching record where ticker equals to Apple, will be changed into a pandas 2000 and 2001. So let me run that. And remember, you got to commit the change. Um, so it's actually con uh, connection commit. The cursor doesn't commit, uh, only the connection commits. So reopen the database to see the change uh, take place. So this is that second record where it used to be Apple. It's re replaced by the new values that we just uh, passed into. So as far as I know, there's no efficient way to update records using pandas approach. Whenever updating certain values inside the table, this would be the cursor.execute would be the, the preferred way uh, to do. And next, let's try to delete record from a table. And the SQL statement will be delete from. So we're deleting from a table name. And then the pandas table, which is um, the table on the background, where equal to question mark again for passing in variables. We're going to delete pandas because pandas is not really a stock uh, ticker. So we're deleting that. OK, so um, it said where, but I didn't I didn't specify what column to, to look for. So where ticker equal to um, question mark. I think I might need to do this. Yeah, so I thought this is already like a tuple. And then there's only one element with, uh, inside the tuple, which is pandas. But apparently, if I don't add this uh, comma at the end, it doesn't recognize this as a tuple. So uh, again, we have to commit the change and yeah, it's a bit annoying that we have to keep closing and re reopening the database. But since we're still trying to learn, hopefully that's OK. So now we're back to the same pandas table. And then you see that the pandas row uh, got deleted. So I want to remind you that be very careful with the delete statement, because if you don't include this where clause, basically the condition that I will delete all the records from this table that you're trying to delete. So if deleting everything is not your intention, make sure to include the where clause to specify what you want to delete. Now we can delete the records from a table. What if we just want to completely wipe out a table? So that's also easy. Drop table, when we append this table like that. And of course, commit. Now check again. And you see that pandas table uh, just got dropped and you will not find it anywhere because we, we've just deleted the pandas table. Once we're done working with the database, it's always a good practice that we close the connection so that it doesn't conflict with anything else later on that we might be doing. So the way to do it is just con.close. If you watched to this point, thank you very much. Like I said, I think SQLite is very easy to use and then um, very powerful. I actually use it almost every day. And the reason that I want to introduce this to you guys is I find it very useful. And in my later tutorials, I'll be showing how to create uh, some dashboard, uh, some data visualization that will also utilize uh, the SQLite database. If you find this video helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel and then give me a like and uh, leave a comment if you're using SQLite database at the moment or if you want to use it. And that's it for today. Uh, I'll see you in the next one.